living God. But in order to serve him, you must first learn his ways. System, bro. This lesson, of course, is the dietary law. You know, this is something, the dietary law is something that people think that they can take lightly, where it's not one of the uh, God's, people have told me, well, it's not one of the Lord's major commandments. I'm going to tell you something. Anytime the Lord tells you to not do something, it's major. And we're going to show you. And we're going to show you that he looks upon it as major. Too many people take the word of God lightly. Sometimes I think they get God confused with the man that's standing before him and preaching to him. I can make a flaw. God can't. And this is one of the things that all of the churches have found a way to throw in the garbage can. And that is the dietary law. Like it's not even a part of the Bible. They won't tell you, well, that's the Jews thing and that's the Old Testament. I want to tell you something, sister and brother. The whole Bible is the Jews thing. Every book in here was written by an Israelite. Every prophet was an Israelite. Every apostle. And I double down when I say every apostle was an Israelite. Because people try to tell you, well, you know, I think it was uh, Luke. Or one of them was a Gentile. Luke was one of the ones that wanted to stone Peter for talking to a Gentile. So this is the Lord's thing. And Israel, we just happen to be the one that the Lord used to put this word out here. Not that we're any better or we're any more righteous. It's just that the Lord made the choice. To me, I, to this day, I don't know why. Because I look at the way we behave sometimes. Maybe he made, chose us first to get us together because he know everybody, he gets straight by somebody else. We're just going to come behind him and mess him up. <laughs> and believe me, that's about the side. Don't you know it was the Israelites that killed the prophet? It was the Israelites that chased Paul them all over the landscape. And the apostles, Israelites. So maybe the Lord said, look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix these guys so I won't have to go back and refix what I already have fixed that they're going to mess up. But we're going to get to the dietary law system, brothers. We're going to show you that this law is still in force and to break it is to offend God. And we're going to show you that he's going to deal with you when he get here. If you break this law. But we're going to start it first. In the creation. We're going to start it in Genesis 1. We're going to deal with the very beginning sisters and brothers. Because in order to understand something. You need to get it at the foundation. Genesis the first chapter. <clears throat> and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Okay read it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, we aren't going to deal with all this. We're just going to deal with the things that we are concerned with. So skip now to verse 26, verse 12, brother. Verse 12 and read it. And the earth brought forth grass, and the herb yielding seed after his kind. Uh-huh. And the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself. Go ahead. After his kind. And God saw that it was good. Now, the Lord set this earth up for man. He put the vegetation, the trees, and fruit, everything for this man to eat. Now, skip now to verse 26. And now he's going to bring man into existence. Verse 26. Okay, go ahead. And God said, let us make man in our image uh -huh. after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. Go ahead. And over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, the Lord made man the boss on the earth, sisters and brothers. Put him over everything. In case y'all wonder why it's so hot here, because it's not supposed to be this <laughs> warm. 
this time of the year. Mm-hmm. And what we do is we pump the air conditioners down so we won't blow a compressor in the wintertime. Amen. So it kind of caught us sleeping. So y'all got to suffer with me. I don't mind you fanning, but do not go to sleep on me. <laughs> so God said, made man in his own image. Go ahead and read. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Uh Male and female created he them. Go ahead. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So God put man in charge on earth, sisters and brothers, and man is in charge because there's nothing that we can't tame. I don't care how big it is or where it's located. If we can find it, we can control it. Because God gave man the power to control. That's preparation for something else. But then that's another lesson. But go ahead and read. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, Uh and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. Now, are we going to point out something that nobody pays no attention? In the beginning, God made man a vegetarian or fruitarian. Man didn't eat meat. Nothing ate meat, even the animals. Go ahead and read. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, Uh and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every tree, every green herb for meat, and it was so. Now, so the Lord made everything a vegetarian or fruitarian. Wasn't no such thing as eating meat. You know, at one time, sisters and brothers, we was the kind of like unofficial, uh, unofficial, uh, 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 Dietary setters for most of the penal institutions. Everybody used to sin here. But what stopped is because they keep, kept trying to get me to deal with this vegan uh, 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 diet. But I said, no, the vegan diet is on the other side of the flood. So when we kept telling them we don't honor the vegan, what we do is we honor the 11th chapter of Leviticus after a while they stopped sinning. But just about every penal institution used to sin here. Because most Israelite classes are so small, and they didn't even have no, nothing to kind of uh, 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 answer them for. But, me, but the Israeli God don't have that problem. But the whole thing is, they didn't like our answers, so the guys stopped recommending stop recommend us. But man was a vegetarian first. Animals was vegetarian first. But when the Lord got tired because of man's wickedness and started and, and, and killed everything by a flood, which we're going to show you later, then the Lord put meat on the table. So let's look at this side of the flood, sisters and brothers. Let's go into Genesis, the ninth chapter. Genesis chapter 9. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Genesis 9 and 1. Because all everything on the other side of the flood, Cain and all his seeds, and all of the seed of everybody, they all was vegetarian. Animals were vegetarian. But when the Lord flooded the earth, and saved Noah and his household and the animals that Noah had with him, then the Lord put meat on the table. Genesis 9 and 1. Go ahead and read. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Uh Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Now he said be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. That means repopulate, sisters and brothers. But that's the same directive he gave to Adam and Eve because they was not the first on this earth. But then that's another lesson. First one is called man, but not the first to inhabit this earth. So it's a repopulate theory. Go ahead and read. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth Uh and upon every fowl of the air. Go ahead. Upon all that moveth upon the earth Uh and upon all the fish of the sea. Into your hands are they delivered. So now something changed here. Animals weren't afraid of men and men was not afraid of animals. But now on this side of the flood, he said, the fear and the dread of all the animals going to be upon you. Go ahead and read. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Uh-huh. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. Now, that's when he put meat on the table now. He said, now, every living thing now is going to be meat to you, even as I have given you the herbs. In other words, on the other side of the flood, the only thing you can eat is herbs. On this side of the flood, you can eat your herbs and you can eat some meat too. But then the Lord started telling you, what you could not eat about this meat. Go ahead and read. But flesh with the life thereof, which uh, is the blood thereof, uh-huh. shall ye not eat. Go ahead. And now sure- look. You know, I was on the TV 
a, a program years ago with what you call some a gentleman that called himself a sage. And, and I was trying to sell some meat. That's when the meat out was going. And the first thing he wanted to engage me in is on a dietary law because he's going to show me we ain't supposed to eat meat. And when he started to try to engage me, I said, look, brother, if I'd known that we were going to deal with the Bible, I would have brought mine. You know what he told me? I got one. I said, well, go get it. Then when we read this about the don't eat the uh, uh, meat with the blood, see, everything is meat for you. But the meat with the blood mean the animals. Then I took the 11 chapter of Leviticus, and I read what the Lord said, these are the beasts thou shalt eat. And I asked him a question. Now, what is it that you don't understand about these are the beasts thou shalt eat? Then all of a sudden, he wanted to go back and sell some meat now. Because he wanted to have it believed that we are still on the other side of the flood. If you choose to be a vegetarian, we don't have no problem with that. God don't have no problem with it. But you can't say the Lord said you ain't supposed to eat it if he put it on the table. He just said, I don't want you to eat the blood. But when the Lord put the animal on the table, he put you on the table too. Go ahead and read. I'm going to show you. Go ahead. Five. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. Uh -huh. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. See, he said, now look, not only is the animal on, you own the animal on your table, you own the animal's table. Every beast going to be trying to kill you. That's why people deal with wild animals and they want to raise wild animals. And when the wild animals do something, they wonder what happened. Got the guy, got him a python snake. One day he come in the room, he go out for a few minutes, he come back, he can't call find the baby. The snake that ate the baby, that's a true story. He mad at the evil snake. You, the snake is not evil. He is doing his nature. He saw the baby, to him that was food. And you had other animals that are wild animals attack and kill man. You know why? Is because man don't know it. God put him on the animals. He said, every beast, didn't he? Yes, he did. So now, you are able to eat animals, but animals are able to eat you too. Because the Lord removed the covenant that he had made between man and animal. You know, the animals, animal, animal name all the animals in the God. Lion come by. Bam, bam, I'm going to call you lion. He might lick his finger. Go on by. Come here, tiger. Snake crawl up. Pat him. I'm going to call you Python. Go on up. Nothing hurt. Anything. It's going to be like that again. But in the beginning, that's where it was. But when the Lord brought it across the table, he said, I'm going to let you eat animals. And I'm going to let animals eat you. So if you put yourself in harm's way, animal come down on you. And don't need a hollering, oh, Lord, have mercy. Stop him. Because he already told you. I done made you his dinner just like you. He is your dinner. That's on this side of the flood, sisters and brothers. On this side of the flood. But he said, you shall not eat the blood when you eat these animals. Now let's go into Leviticus, the 17th chapter. Because when the Lord put meat on the table, then he had to tell you what part of the meat you shall not eat. Leviticus 17. I'm going to start reading that verse 10. Leviticus 17 and verse 10. Okay, read it. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourn among you uh -huh. that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood. See, and look, sisters and brothers, every time the Lord gave Israel something, he gave it to all of the sons of Adam. So whatever it is, the son of, of Israel are. The stranger that eateth blood, I'm going to do what with him? Go ahead and read. And I will cut him off from among his people. That means I'm going to cut him off. That's clear. So you being a stranger is not one law for me and another law for somebody else. Go ahead and read. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Uh -huh. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. Go ahead. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So the, life, the blood is, a, is the life, sisters and brothers. You don't have to eat, 
uh, shoot anybody or, or cut their throat or nothing. All you, if you can figure out a way to drain them out of blood, they will die. That's why the Lord used even the blood to make an atonement with you. We have been cut off even to the second death until Jesus came. And when he came, he died for us just like it was down in Egypt. He said, when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over your house. When I see the blood, I'm going to pass over your sin. Blood represents life. And the Lord said, I don't want you eating life. Go ahead and read. 12. Therefore, I say unto the children of Israel, no soul of you shall eat blood. Neither shall any stranger that so joineth among you eat blood. He said, no soul. That means nobody should eat blood. No stranger. It didn't mean you couldn't get a blood transfusion now. Because you got a lot, you got religion running around here, people needing blood. And they going to have to have it or die. No, you can't eat the blood. Look, eat the blood means you consume it with your mouth. And why is it that blood can save your life? Because the blood is the life, sisters and brothers. But if you should eat it, you or anybody that's among you, whether it's Israel or non-Israelite, you're going to get cut off from among your people. Go ahead and read. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel or of the stranger that sojourn among you, uh-huh. which hunteth and catcheth any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust. So if you find an animal and you kill it, the one that you may be, you're allowed to eat, you cannot eat the blood. You say, well, brother boy, who eats the blood? You got a lot of people like nice, juicy, rare steaks. And you even have what you call duck, duck blood soup. I never forget when I was younger, I used to do heat and air conditioning. I was out in Oak Park somewhere, and I was fixing this lady's furnace, and she came down with a nice bowl. Oh, would you like to have some duck blood soup? I thought I was going to throw up. <laughs> no, ma'am, we're not allowed to eat at customers' houses. I had to lie. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a delicacy among certain people, a duck blood soup. But I knew then, because I was in the Word then, I wouldn't have ate blood anyway, I'm going to tell you the truth. But I knew for sure then, because of the Word of God, that I ain't supposed to deal with it. So I put tight light the told her what we was not supposed to do. Go ahead and read. 14. For it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Uh-huh. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, you shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. For the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Uh Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. That's pretty clear, ain't it? That is pretty clear. So I'm pretty sure that people that are drinking duck blood soup, a lot of them good Christians, but they don't know about this. You know why? Because they're New Testament Christians. And we're going to show you that nothing changed. So what did the Lord do? He took the man, which he made, a vegetarian. Then he turned around and put meat on the table. Now he told him what part of the meat or uh, the blood that's in the meat not to drink, now he's going to tell this man what beast that he can and cannot eat. Now let's back up to the 11th chapter of Leviticus. But this is all here, sisters and brothers, and we're supposed to know this, because before you get out of here, you're going to find out who really put this law on the table. And it's going to shock a lot of people, sisters and brothers. Leviticus 11 and verse 1. We're going to start at verse 1. This is what I read to the sage and ask him in the two. <laughs> Read it, we'll tell you. Verse 1, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, uh-huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Go ahead. These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Now I read that. Now this guy going to get off into biblical exchange with me with his Bible. I just read this one verse and asked him the question. Now what part? Of these are the beasts you shall eat that you don't understand. Conversation was over with. That was the easiest sage I ever dealt with. <laughs> so we got back to what we was going to do. It's just like this is not even in the Bible, sisters and brothers. He even asked me a question, well, how did you get from a, 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 a vegetarian to eating meat? I said, by turning the page. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 2, go ahead and read. Verse 3. Whatsoever parteth the hoof, and is cloven-footed, and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. Uh Uh-huh. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. 
he is unclean unto you. Now the Lord did one thing. He knew that we are not going to understand and know all these particular animals. So he gave you the absolute identifying uh, 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 pattern. If he chew the good and he has split hoof, you can eat it. If you have a split hoof and don't chew the good, you can't eat it. If he chew the good and have a round hoof and no split, you can't eat it. That's all that simple. So I don't know how to know the name of all these things. Now, he named the camel. Camel chewed the cud, but the camel don't have a split hoof. His hoof is just like a horse. Go ahead and read. Five. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. Now, I don't know what the coney is. So I know somebody going to give me a picture of him sooner or later. That's what I always do. But I know one thing. I can't eat it. Because he don't have the, the, the split hoof. Go ahead and read. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, now he is unclean to you. Now I know there's not a rabbit, because a rabbit don't have a hoof. You understand? But I know one thing. When he's chewing the cud and he ain't got a split foot, I don't eat it. Go ahead and read. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth, cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Now, maybe in these modern days, nobody know what a swine is. So I'm going to let you know the swine's name, pig hog. You don't eat pig, sisters and brothers. Because you have a split hook, but it don't chew the cud. It's all that simple. Go ahead and read. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, uh -huh. and their carcass shall ye not touch. Go ahead. They are unclean to you. Uh -huh. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever hath fins and scales in the water, in the seas and in the rivers. Them shall ye eat. And all now you notice how the Lord always gives you the absolute identifying factor. Now these in the waters you shall not eat. You shall eat, rather. Whatever have fins and scales. You get some of these modern Bibles now. That's why I'm, I'm real leery about these modern Bibles to help you understand that old English. Because I saw one was written, whatever that have fins are scale, you can eat. That just changed the whole dynamics then. Catfish have a fin but no scale. But when you use our scale, then you can eat the catfish. But if you use what the Lord have written here, fins and scale, you can't eat the catfish. You can't eat the shark. You can't eat the crab. He's in the water. You can't eat the lobster. You can't eat the clam. Because he's in the water. He don't have fins and scale. Because I'm going to tell you something. Some of this stuff really got to me because I'm from the South. I ate catfish. I ate pig. We even used to have pig killing days. You understand? I'd go through there and pull the, the liver, uh, the uh, uh, kidneys out. Throw it on the fire. And pick it up and eat it. That's that boy's a barbarian. <laughs> and I love chitlins with hot peppers. But when I saw this, I said, I can't eat that. What verse are we? We're at 10. Go ahead and read. And all that have not fins and scales in the sea and in the rivers of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. Now, you notice how absolute that is? All that have not. All. And any living thing that moves in the water. See, some people try to say, well, you know, they're just talking about the fish. You know, No, they're talking about crab. They're talking shrimp. They're talking lobster. Certainly catfish. You can't eat it. And the Lord put this here unsolicited. He didn't ask Moses, do you want me to uh, give you a dietary law? And Moses didn't ask, well, Lord, we don't know what to eat. Tell us what to eat. No, no, uh, uh God gave this to him unsolicited. Go ahead and read they shall be even an abomination unto you. You shall not eat of their flesh. Go ahead. But ye shall have their carcasses an abomination. Uh-huh. Whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. The Lord is making a point here, isn't it? For nobody to pay no attention. You look at all this stuff, you go to Long John Silver, house of garbage. <laughs> but people go there to eat in luxury. Seafood. Go ahead and read. 13. And these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls. Uh -huh. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. Go ahead. The eagle and the offspring and the offspring 
and the vulture and the kite after his kind. Uh huh. Every raven after his kind. Go ahead. And the owl and the nighthawk and the cockle and the hawk after his kind. Go ahead. And the little owl and the cormorant and the great owl. Now you would eat no owl anyway, would you? Hoot out. No, I ain't gonna eat that. But what else we got here? Go ahead and read. And the swan and the pelican. Wait a minute. Swan? What is a swan? That's a goose and a duck. The goose is a swan with a long neck. And the duck is a swan with a short neck. I used to be what you call a Chinese roast duck eater, sisters and brothers. I would drive a long ways to get it. And a brother upstairs whooped me into submission. The only reason he whipped me because I just wanted to do wrong anyway. Now I can't give up my duck. It's a swan. It didn't say duck. He said, what kind of bill a goose have? Black. What kind of feet do he have? Well feet. Can he swim in water? Yeah. What did he do? Well, he, don't he stick his head and catch me? Yeah. I said, okay, brother, I give up. <laughs> I had to give it up. I was raised in the South, sisters and brother. Every time I drive in the park, I see all these wild geese out there. I was, if I was home, I'd have me about 15 or 20 of them in the freezer, man. <laughs> but the dietary law said, I can't have it. Not that I don't want it now. Because I look at them and I get to struggling for them. Look at all that meat <laughs> on the feet. <laughs> I'd have sneak and find out to kill me a few and pick them out there. But the whole thing is, when I read it, I said, I can't do it. I was raised in the South, sister and brother. If it was stayed... <laughs> In one place long enough, I caught it and ate it. Go ahead and read. And the Greer Eagle, and the Stork, the Heron after her kind, uh -huh. and the Lapwing, and the Bat. All fowls that creepeth going upon all four shall be an abomination unto you. Now these fowls that go up on all four, some of them is talking about insects, sisters and brothers. Anything that flies is called a fowl. When we think fowl, we only think bird. You got a lot of fowl. You got beetles, grasshoppers, a whole lot of Grass copper you can eat, by the way, but we're not dealing with that. I'm just showing you how the Lord put this dietary law on the table. Skip down to verse 26. Verse 26 and go ahead. The carcasses of every beast which divideth the hoof and is not cloven-footed, nor cheweth the cud, are unclean unto you. Every one that touches them shall be unclean. Now, we know that. We've been through that, didn't we? Go ahead and read. And whatsoever goeth upon his paws... Among all manner of beasts that go on all four, uh -huh. those are unclean unto you. Whoso touches their carcass shall be unclean until the even. Now, who, what is this? This is rabbit, squirrels, coon. I used to hunt all that. I used to chase a coon all night. We had coon dog. We had rabbit dog. We had squirrel dog. And we ate every one we caught. <laughs> but then when I read this here, I said, oh, no, it's something else I got to give up. <laughs> but I had to give it up. My mother used to cook rabbit with gravy and rice every Sunday morning. And me and my brothers made sure she had plenty to cook. But the whole thing is, sister and brother, this is a dietary law. We had to back off of it. Go ahead and read. 28. And he that beareth the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. Uh -huh. They are unclean unto you. Go ahead. These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth, uh -huh. the weasel and the mouse and the tortoise after his kind. Now, it's, it's talking here, but this tortoise, I know that's a turtle. I know what he is because I used to love him too. Long-haired turtle, soft shell turtle. I could run them all because we used to eat turtle stew. Can't eat that no more. That's one thing in the South, sister and brother. You didn't have to have no stock. All you had to know what a varmint was. And you could eat well. Go ahead and read. And the ferret and the chameleon and the lizard and the snail and the mole. Uh -huh. These are unclean to you among all that creepeth. Go ahead. Whosoever doth touch them when they be dead shall be unclean until the even. Go ahead. And upon whatsoever any of them, and upon whatsoever any of them which they are dead doth fall, it shall be unclean. Whether it be any vessel of wood or raiment or skin or sack. Whatsoever vessel it be wherein any work is done, it must be put into water, and it shall be unclean until the evening. In other words, you have to something some of these things fall upon it, sisters and brothers. You have to wash it if they fall in some of your vessels. Finish that. So it shall be cleansed. Now skip down to verse 39 and go ahead. Because I'm, I'm going to read some of this to y'all. 
So you won't walk out, well, he didn't read about the possum. He grew up all four, and he got claws. You can't eat the possum. Go ahead and read. And if any beast of which ye may eat die, he that touches the carcass thereof shall be unclean until the even. He's not. Go ahead. And he that eateth the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. Uh-huh. He also that beareth the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. See, this is a beast that you can eat, but if it die by itself, the Lord said, don't eat it because obviously there's something wrong with it. So the Lord is protecting your health. Go ahead and read. And every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth shall be an abomination. It shall not be eaten. Uh Uh-huh. Whatsoever goeth upon the belly, and whatsoever goeth upon all four, or whatsoever hath more feet among all creeping things that creep upon the earth, them ye shall not eat, for they are an abomination. So you can't eat the snail. You can't eat the nightcrawler. You can't eat the snake. You can't eat the lizard. Because the Lord says it's an abomination. Oh, Brother Boo, I wouldn't eat. Don't you know snails are a delicacy in some places? And snakes are delicate in some places? And they even eat night crawlers. I really like it threw up when I found that out. But this man eats everything. He forgot to read the dietary law. He eats everything that you could put on the table. And I'm going to tell you something, this man is defending his eating habit. He do not want to deal with this dietary law. So what do they do? They will go and find other passages in the Bible to try and kill the dietary law or circumvent the dietary law. What I'm going to do is we're going to deal with some of these because when you go and tell people you can't eat that pig, you can't eat that catfish, and that, that, that coon that your uh, 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 mother brought up from the south, we can't eat that. They're going to go and try to defend this. They're going to go to tell their preacher, and their preacher going to take them to this. But you're going to be ready for them when they come. Let's go and ask the 10th chapter. I'm going to show you what's going to be read to you, sisters and brothers. Because it's not enough for me to teach you, show you where you ain't supposed to eat it. You have to show you how you, are, how you can defend not eating it. So they, won't, so they won't take you to a spot and kill your spirit. Because they'll do that. Then they laugh, where'd you get that stuff from? Oh, shuck. Lord, here we go right now. I ain't never heard of nothing like that. We're going to read this to you. And believe me, if you haven't had it read to you, you will. Acts the 10th chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 9. Acts 10 and verse 9. Okay, go ahead. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh to the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Now, you had some people that was going looking for Peter. And while they was on their way to find him, the Lord had him. Uh, Peter went up on the housetop to pray, but something happened to him. Go ahead and read. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance uh-huh. and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending up unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and laid down and let down to the earth. So now he got, he got sleepy and he was hungry and he went up there and went to sleep. All of a sudden he saw a sheet coming down from heaven, knit at four corners. And what happened? What was in it? Go ahead and read. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth uh-huh. and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. Now, I mean, every kind of beast was in there. Every kind of bird was in that net. And look what the voice from heaven said to Peter. Go ahead and read. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Uh Uh-huh. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Now, look, it said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. That means you can eat anything now. But Peter said, not so, Lord. I've never eaten anything common or unclean in my life. Because Peter was an Israelite. They knew the dietary law. But what did the Lord say? Go ahead and read. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God has cleansed, that call not thou common. Say, What God has cleansed, that call not thou common. In other words, don't talk, you know, God didn't clean up all the beasts. You can eat everything. What verse was that? That's the end of 15. Go ahead and read. This was done thrice, and the vessel were received up again into heaven. Now, see, see the Lord showed him that twice. Let you know that you can eat anything now. And the Lord then cleansed it. Therefore, it is not common or unclean. Now, you know what we're going to do? 
We're going to do something real simple. We're going to back up to the top of this thing and see what we're really talking about. Are we talking about circumventing the dietary law, that the Lord didn't change the dietary law and took it, take it off the table and say you can eat it and anything now? Or is the Lord trying to do something else? Let's investigate. Ten and one. Ten and one. Okay, go ahead. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, uh -huh. a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Go ahead. A devout man and one that feareth God with all his house, uh -huh. which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. So now this is Cornelius, the Italian. This is the first Gentile that was brought into the church under the new covenant system, brother. And this man prayed and helped Israel all the time. This is what I tell people all the time. When somebody's praying, don't condemn them. Because even if they don't know what God that they're praying to, if their mind is in the right place, the correct God will contact them. He'll send somebody by them or either send you somewhere. So Cornelius uh, apparently was a good man and God found his heart in the right place. So he told, so he sent him a message. Okay, you're looking for something? I'm going to give it to you. Go ahead and read. Three. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Go ahead. Cornelius, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? Uh -huh. And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine arm are come up for a memorial before God. Now, all of a sudden, this angel showed up. And when he called his name, he wanted to know what's going on. He said, Lord, and heard your prayer. And he didn't see your good behavior. Go ahead and read. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou ought to do. Now, sisters and brothers, that angel could have told Cornelius what to do. But he didn't. Why? It's because the Lord have a protocol. The father give it to Jesus. Jesus Give it to his angel. The angel bring it to Israel. And Israel teaches the rest of the sons of Adam. So the angel told him, go and find one Peter. He will tell you what you are supposed to do. The same angel, which is a spirit being, had to run down there and prepare Peter because he was preparing Peter. So that's why Peter went up on the housetop. And the Lord is preparing Peter for something. And let's show you what it is. Skip down to verse 17. Verse 17. So these guys came looking for Peter. And while Peter was up on the tower stop trying to figure out what had happened. Verse 17. Go ahead. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision might, which he had seen, should mean. Behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. Now, Peter was trying to figure out what is it that the Lord is trying to tell me. That's why I said, why are they trying to figure out what this should mean? Because he know that the Lord didn't, tell, didn't want him to start eating pig and catfish. So he was trying to figure out what was going on. And in the meantime, when he's trying to figure it out, these guys from Cornelius showed up. To any one of you out there, lay back and live in it up. Come give me an ear I have some. Everyone of you out there Everyone of you 